Shooters, Reloaders, and Conversationalists, welcome to Founder Labs. Today, we're going to present the improvements we've made to the Lee Precision Brunel Hardness Tester. Let's touch on a few preliminaries. We're focused on Brunel Hardness, the Lee Hardness Tester, the improvements we've made, and to give a background for a follow-on demonstration video. We're not covering details in material science or the other hardness testing methods. There are several topics here important to shooters. Uh, alloy hardening methods, how hardness relates to specific shooting applications, and how hardness uh, relates to chamber pressure. For this and much more, we heartily recommend this online reference from Frylex and Applegate. In fact, this is a very comprehensive reference. The only thing we might add is some updates concerning the new high-tech coatings that have since been introduced since this publication went live. Brunel hardness is one of a family of indent type hardness measurements, others being Rockwell, Vickers, Meyer. There's also micro versions of several of these. You may be familiar with Micro Vickers as a hardness measure for brass cartridge cases. ASTM E10 is the standard test for Brunel hardness on metallic materials. Here's a brief overview of the test procedure. Have an indenter of diameter D subject to a force coming into the sample. And then this is held for a certain period of time, dwell time. This creates an indent. Measurement involves determining the average diameter and using the Brunel formula here to get the Brunel hardness. Here's an example of the indent in uh, soft lead. Uh, it's important to understand the uh, Brunel hardness is a characteristic of a material. It's not a characteristic property. So, uh, for instance, the boiling point of water is, is uniform and is a characteristic property. However, this type of hardness requires that we be careful about how we make the measurement and how we specify our results. We'll refer to this several times in this presentation. August Brunel was a Swedish metallurgical engineer working in the steel industry in Sweden. He proposed the Brunel hardness test in 1900. This is uh, the indent measurement that's based on surface area. His interest was uh, Swedish steel and his measurement uh, divided by two was approximately equal to the ultimate tensile strength of steels, which was his main concern at the time. Professor Eugene Meyer was the German scientist who studied Brunel's work, and he proposed improvements uh, in uh, looking at the data and analyzing that in 1908. Uh, the main thing is Meyer's based uh, the indent on surface projection instead of surface area. We're going to talk about that more in detail in a minute. Uh, we don't have a photo or really much information about uh, Professor Meyer, so if any of our viewers come across photos or any information, please make a comment on the video or reach out to us uh, and contact us through our um, Pounder Labs website. This individual you'll run across, this uh, Meyer is a chemist that lived in the 19th century who is heavily involved with the periodic table. But uh, it, this uh, Eugene Meyer is, is a different person. We'd like to learn more about them. The work Meyer did really underpins the success of Brunel hardness as we practice it today. If you look at this relationship here, you'll see what's going on. The uh, pressure is a function of the resistance of the material. The Meyer index is the measure of the effect of the deformation. And then here's the diameter of the indent. This is the expression that calculates uh, Meyer hardness, force over uh, the indent uh, diameter squared. Now, this is a very simple idea, and why would you uh, want to focus on this? Well, the reason being is under certain test conditions, you might get different hardness values. Consider this uh, diagram here. This is the percent, if you will, on the depth of the indenter into the sample. So if you think about a 10 millimeter diameter indenter, this is 10, 20, 30, 40 percent, and so forth, and here's hardness. 
in the case of Meyer, it's this formula. In the case of Brunel, it's uh, what we showed on a previous slide. This particular sample is comparing work hardened versus annealed copper, but the concept is the same. You'll see as the as the penetrator goes in deeper and deeper indent, this can actually loop back on itself with a Brunel hardness. So you could actually end up with multiple hardness values depending on the depth of the indent. Well, if we look at the red line, that's a Meyer hardness, you see it's singular value, in this case copper. Now this is important because in our work is going to be with lead, which has Brunel hardness of 4 to about maybe 30. So we want to stay within the linear plastic region of the stress-strain curve. So we want to make sure we're staying down in this region. Okay. Well, the major thing we see from the Meyer works is this relationship here. Things like K and the Meyer index are rather difficult to get a hold of. But we can see there's a relationship by changing the integer size and the associated force. So all we have to do is be mindful of computing the force to diameter ratio. And this is called out in the ASTM E103 table. So in the production systems, you'll see a variety of different indenters based on the uh, range of hardness being studied. This is what's included in the Lee hardness tester. The indenter assembly, a V-block shell holder, and a small microscope. And this is uh, readily available in the U.S. for uh, uh, under $100. Here's the indenter disassembled. You can think of this as a calibrated um, valve spring from an engine, but there are calibration shims, so Lee does not recommend taking it apart, and we wholeheartedly agree because of the good chance you're going to lose calibration. Uh, notice this shaft here will go through the indenter body. This will be part of our measurement system uh, we'll talk about uh, later. Uh, we went with the uh, Lee tester for several reasons. We think it's an excellent platform for building off of, for uh, measuring precision Brunel hardness. It follows very closely what the ASTM um, method is about. Uh, it has a spring versus dead weight, but uh, that's all been calibrated in. It's also been designed for uh, bullet lead in the 4 to 30 Brunel hardness range, and it's, uh, we find it very easy to extend new test and measurement. Uh, these are the regular 7, 8, 14 thread that goes right into the standard uh, reloading press. Uh, now you can see from the previous diagram uh, we showed we can't really do copper. You'll see that we showed that the Brunel hardness of uh, copper annealed or hard works up in this range. Uh, conceivably, you could put in a, a stronger spring, yeah, but you really would need to go ahead and get a smaller indenter ball and we don't really think that's a, a worthwhile investment given our interest in uh, the hardness of uh, cartridge cases. And this is strictly for, uh, for measuring lead. Let's take a closer look at how the lead tester aligns with the ASTM method. You're using a 532nd steel ball indenter, which is going to give approximately 4 millimeters. The 60-pound uh, force gives us 27-kilogram force. This gives a force to diameter ratio of about 1.7, and this is held for a dwell time of 30 seconds. If we look at Table 3, remember Meyer's Law we discussed previously, we see the closest uh, entry there is a 5 millimeter ball with 31 kilograms force. This gives an F to D of about 1.25, which would give a Brunel hardness of roughly 4 to about 27. If we look at the Lee, that's uh, the roughly 4 to the 27 here, and here's the previously calculated 1.7, which will give us the Brunel hardness 3.8 to 33, which is exactly what we want. Uh, table 4 talks about sample thickness. The uh, closest value in the table is with the 5 millimeter ball, uh, creating the uh, indent of 2.8 millimeters. Remember now, we want to keep in that 50, 60, 70 range of depth, um, to give the best and most accurate values, which means we'd have a minimum thickness a little over 4 
millimeters or 170 mils. If we look at the Lee, which is a four millimeter ball, and again, going in that 50, 60, 70% region of depth, calls out about a 3.4 millimeter or roughly 140 mil thickness. Uh, reporting, if we call formal or the scientific reporting, you'll see in the literature, this is given with three significant digits and it's uh, expressed this way, hardness Brunel, S for steel, W for tungsten. But you'll also see both the diameter and the force are called out. So here's some representative examples. So if you're 100 or above, you're going to put it this way. If you're under 100, you're going to have one significant digit to the right. And if you're under 10, you're going to have two to the right. This gets back to the point we made earlier about uh, specifying results so you have confidence that uh, this has been measured correctly. So when you run across uh, reports and in advertising or on uh, web postings and so forth where you're just given a, a Brunel hardness without calling out all this information here, you have to be very careful. This may not have been done according to ASTM standards and you may have trouble referencing it to other values in table and a literature. Measuring the hardness of uh, lead and its alloys is a bit of a prickly pear. Alloys can change hardness just by sitting. This process is age hardening. Pure lead doesn't change hardness with time, but some alloys, those with uh, tin, we're called soft solders, can get softer with time, and some alloys harden with age, those with uh, antimony, what we call antimonial lead. Uh, alloys are also very sensitive to the hardening process. If you think about it this way, at least ways compared to other metals, um, at room temperature, solid lead's a lot closer to its melting point. So test samples can be easily damaged, and it's important to rem remember lead is uh, notorious for creep under load. So to get the best uh, results for hardness measurement, you need to carefully adhere to test procedures, handle samples with care, and as always, safety first. Remember, uh, lead is toxic. Starting off with the Lee Hardness Tester as the foundation, we made improvements in a couple of areas that give us high precision Brunel hardness. On testing, we made two improvements. One is to add a uh, indicator for the indenter force uh, right here, what we call the gadget, and this uh, increases the speed and accuracy and repeatability of applying the force uh, from the loading press. We've also uh, designed a improved um, sample stage here, giving us a greater variety of samples that we can test. We also designed a new uh, fixture for testing 22 rimfire bullets in the case. So collectively then we have a very broad range of samples we can test. Uh, under measurement we did two things. One, use uh, low-cost digital video cameras in combination with stereoscopes. And then we also then are using on-screen indent measurement improved speed and accuracy and then we use the uh, Microsoft Excel for Brunel calculations and applying our other analytical measures to uh, better understand uh, the hardness and its effect on, um, on, on measurement. Let's take a look at the results we've been able to achieve with our improvements uh, in terms of type of samples, center fire bullet, sidewall and nose, rim fire bullet, uh, nose in the case, shotgun slug sidewall and nose, and we're easily able to measure multiple test point and one half of one pound ingots, what we just call mini pigs. And then uh, we're able to do multiple testing on what we call crucible coins and flat stock. Uh, we believe we've exceeded and improved on the standard lead test. Here's the recommendations they provide. There's the, the indenter ball and now uh, the minimum and uh, by now you're probably very confident on where they get this number right here. So it gives us a range of about 30, 35 down to about 5.5. Uh, we uh, wanted to extend that lower, so we started getting tests of our dead self samples of 4.2 to 4.9 Brunel, 
uh, we really got excited that we were onto something. We were able to get a, a very high purity sample, 99.995% pure lead, and this gives a Brunel uh, about 4.4 uh, with a standard, standard deviation of about 0.1. Uh, for clip-on wheel weights, we get 10 to 14. Uh, chilled shots so at about 10. But what was really important that drove all, all this investment was to understand uh, the hardness of 22 rimfire bullets. The, uh, we felt very strongly that this had uh, small amounts of anomaly in it. Uh, we saw research all the way back that Bell Labs did back in the in the 20s that suggested that uh, as little as uh, three quarter or one percent antimony made a big difference in the hardness and we wanted to see if we can reproduce those results and uh, you can read more about that in a video we did called uh, 22 uh, rimfire bullet reprofiling with neil waltz die so please look at that video we go into a lot of detail there um, to show sensitivity we uh, did this experiment here we have Brunel hardness on the y-axis, and we have dwell time in this axis. Note that this is log scale. So this is 10 seconds, 20. Here's our standard 30 seconds, 1 minute, and 2 minute. So what you'll see is how important it is to get to, the, uh, uh, get to your force and hold that force for the time uh, you need because uh, you get uh, a lot of time goofing around trying to get seated, you're going to be introducing a lot of air here. Uh, so this is the equation of uh, Brunel hardness as a function of dwell time, and we have a good fit to the data. For the uh, curious uh, viewer, if you might uh, fit this regression and ask how long would you have to hold that before you got down to a Brunel hardness of 1, which is the uh, diameter of our indenter, and the answer to that question is about 15 hours. This completes our presentation. Join us in the next video where we give a demonstration of our system. And as you're thinking about subscribing, please look over these important notes and disclaimers. They're here for your protection and ours. Thanks for watching. See you soon.